So the last thing I did for exercise two was I brought in my sketch. And this is a sketch I actually did, informed by the one from the website, but I just want to customize it a little bit more. I have kind of an 80s tuxedo cat, you know, fun emoticon in mind. So the same thing, I'm going to move that sketch all the way to the bottom, just like I did with my screen grab. And the difference is my sketch doesn't have any color, right? But I know I'm in the right resolution size because if I go to image size, image, image size, I can see that I'm 10 by 10 by 300 or bigger, and that's great. What if I want to shrink all of the stuff I've made so far to fit in line with my sketch? And how can I tell if it's in line with my sketch? Well, what I'm going to do is duplicate my sketch, Command J, move it up to the very top, you know, the very top. And then I'm going to take its opacity down to about 30%, this top copy, 33 if I want to be really exact. And then I'm going to lock it with the padlock. All right, now I can see my shapes and my sketch. All of these you can see are shape tools. Not only are they called shapes, but they have that white square in the middle of the the layer window. I'm going to hold down shift and select all of them. There's quite a few of them now. And now, instead of merging them, you don't want to merge them. You don't want to do command E. You don't want to merge shape layers because then they become what's called a compound path. And a compound path is still a vector, but it's not one you're able to edit as easily, right? And it doesn't save any memory. So instead, I'm going to select all of those and I'm going to say edit free transform, and because I have multiple ones selected, that allows me to shift them all. It even allows me to do certain distortions to all of them, but notice you can't warp them all because they're multiple layers. But I can do things like distort, which can be really effective, especially if I want to play with some asymmetry here. and kind of line up that eye and get me started on my version of this cat. All right, then I hit return. And now these are still individual layers, but now they are floating underneath my sketch and I've moved them all. All right, so how can I work with this? I'm gonna make my tools just a little bit smaller so I have more work surface. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pretty much delete certain shapes I don't need anymore. And I'm using the layer select tool with auto select layer. And because I've locked my sketch, what I call an onion skin layer, it's like tracing paper on top. Draftsmen call it onion skin because that's a type of tracing paper that, that you can use for this. It's thin like onion skin. It's a tracing vellum. And then I can just click on the layer and then just hit delete and delete. And instead I can duplicate this one over because I've changed its shape through distort. So I do command J and then I'm going to do option command T, right click within that, flip it horizontally. Remember option command T is our way of doing free transform. It's a shortcut. And then that's there, hit return. And then I can do it with this one. Command J, duplicate it. Option Command T for free transform. Right click, flip horizontal. And then just move it over. Hit return. Now let's see what we've got. So it's looking a little bit more chaotic, which I like. But I want to cut away. But I'm not going to cut away from the shape. Instead, I'm going to split this one shape into two shapes. So I need one for the jaw here. So I'm going to do free transform again. Edit free transform or option command T. And this time I'm going to hold down shift and distort it. Hold down shift and distort it just to get that jaw. Then I'm going to duplicate it after I hit return. Command J, duplicate it. Now play with this again. Option command T. Hold down shift. It's just like making a new shape.
Maybe even tilt it a little bit. And because this is a single path, not a compound path, I can right click and warp it as well with free transform. So I can warp it on this side and kind of bow it out like that. I can warp it on this side and have it connect where I want with the ear and kind of line these vectors up. Sink it down. So it's just like rolling dough. And you can do that warp multiple times. So you can see how complex that shape is just using an ellipse that then you warp and pull at different angles. So now let's see what we've got. That's fun. So it's a little off. So again, you can warp multiple times. You can stretch it multiple times. This time I'll just use shift and just pull its edge like that. Turn off the background sketch too, just so I can see it. Yeah, I like that. It's chaotic and asymmetrical, but still clean. So what else can I build? Well, I can do the other eye. Now, wouldn't it make sense, instead of making new shapes, I can just steal these two. And if I hold down Shift with the Layer tool with Auto Select, I can select multiple shapes at once, and I can duplicate multiple shapes. So Command-J will now duplicate both of those layers. And now I'm going to move both of those over, or I'll free transform both of them first. So Edit Free Transform. Shrink them down, and then move them together onto this eye. Hit return. So lots of repetition. I can take this oval, I can duplicate that, and then Option, Command T, Free Transform. Let's flip it horizontally and then shrink it down. I'm going to get this other cheek that I sketched. And just because I sketched it doesn't mean that this is what I need to follow. But it gives me a different way to start. Something to react to, just like what we did on the website. And you're kind of feeling it out as you go. And I like that. I don't love this, but I think I'm going to have the neck come into there. Now, what about the shape for the nose? That looks like a triangle to me, right? So I'm going to make a new triangle. I'm going to click on the, the parametric shape. Three sides. Make a triangle. It's always going to be uh, an equilateral triangle, but then I warp it change it to what I want. Uh, my cat has a pink nose, so I'm going to go for pink. And then Option Command T. Get it lined up and then just squash it down with Shift. Boom. Now if I want to be fancy about it, I can Option Command T and I can warp it just from these sides, you know, give it a slight curve, kind of push in on it. And then I can right click, tug it down. Warp really is a beautiful tool. Maybe arch it a little bit on the top. I like that. And then I can right click inside and just scale it down. Like so. So now what do I have? Oh, but that nose shape, it went above my sketch because I was selected on my sketch. So I'm just going to move it back down. Okay, how am I going to get these lines? And these whiskers? So instead of using the line tool, I'm going to use this rectangle tool. Everything has been ellipses and triangles so far. So the rectangle, 
I'm just going to make it long like this. I'm going to choose its color. Let's just make it, hmm, I'm actually going to make it like a grayish white. Well, I won't do that for right now because you won't be able to see it. But eventually it's going to be a grayish white. So I'll just do black whiskers for now. And then I'm going to warp it. So edit, free transform, just lots of warping, all with those vector shapes. So all we're doing is making vector shapes, moving them around, and then transforming them. And putting them in the right order, like cutouts of paper. And we're just using solid colors for each of them. That's our requirement. After that, we can do more specialized effects like textures and gradations. So I'm going to right-click inside the transform box and warp it. And I want it to kind of bend up a little. Right there. And then on the up bottom edge. Then I want this side to bend down a little. Right there. And then on the other corner. And I can make them asymmetrical, where they're thinner at one end, thicker at the other but I'll just keep it like this. But you want to be careful with your warp because you have vectors between all these points. And these are what are called Bezier curves that you're actually playing with with the warp. So if you keep them straight, the line between the anchor points will be straight, but you can also curve it out just by pushing on them. And so you can round out your rectangle in different ways if that's something you're interested in. So I might just round it off a little bit and then use the, the Bezier curve to average it maybe to about there. Or Bezier handle is what they're called. And I can do it on the other end as well. So use these curves, kind of lengthen that. All right, now that I've got a whisker shape, let's put it in the right place using free transform again. But instead of warping, this time I'm just rotating and scaling. So I've got one whisker. I'm just gonna run it behind my other shapes. Now I'm gonna teach you a shortcut because it's very helpful when you start to have lots of layers. I want this layer, my whisker, to go behind. Or maybe I don't want it behind. Maybe I want it in front. But if I wanted to move it behind, instead of just dragging it down and hoping, what I can do is do Command Left Bracket. It's right underneath Command Minus for zooming out. Command Left Bracket will move the selected layer down through the stack until you can see that it's in the right place. And then command right bracket will move it back up through the stack. So you can see it moving. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and put it on top for now. Now I'm gonna make a duplicate of it. Command J. So there's a perfect copy floating right on top of it. I'm gonna free transform that. And I'm gonna flip it. Actually, no, I'm not gonna flip it horizontally. I'm just gonna shrink it smaller. Move it down below a little bit. Maybe rotate it a little bit differently. And maybe, maybe just hit return, free transform again to square up the box. And then hold down shift and just stretch it a little bit thicker. Because when I shrunk it in one dimension, it kind of thinned it out. And I don't want it to be thinner, I just want it to be shorter. Okay, now I've got those two whiskers, which match up to my sketch fairly well. Now I can take those two whiskers and I can use the, the move tool with auto select layer on and hold down shift, select them both, see that they're both selected, they're right here. And I can duplicate both of them just like I did with the eyeball parts, command J. And then I can free transform both of them and right click and flip them horizontally. So it's just a lot of repetition of the same thing. And then move them over to this side. Hit return. Making some good progress here. All right, next, the body. Now, I can definitely do the body 